Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? Welcome to a brand new camp build. So today we're going to make use of the new Wild Mountain Rifle Range prefab that was added via the challenge event quite recently. So let's jump into this one. Okay, so yeah, this particular prefab was added by the recent Fallout 25th Anniversary Challenge event that ended uh, last week. So unfortunately, if you've missed out on that event, then the prefab is not available anymore. But if you did pick it up, then it's pretty cool to use. For those who are wondering whether or not they'll be able to grab it in future, difficult to say, but it might well make an appearance in some point in the future. These things often do, but uh, as to when that might be, who knows? So... Let's have a little look at where we are on the map, first of all. So there we go. Smack in the middle of the forest. There's a rifle range. Follow the road up. We'll find Helvetia just over the way there. Sutton is just down below us there. Moving over this way, we find the Wayward. And 76 all the way up that way. So yeah, a fairly popular area in the map, this one. You do see quite a few camps in this area, including this actual spot that I've seen people build in before. And it's a pretty decent spot, though I've never actually been here before myself. So quite enjoying trying this out. I think I may come back again in future. So let's have a little look around this place because we're going to tour it rather than go with the build as uh, you can probably see why. The building elements are relatively minimal on this. So we've got the uh, rifle range prefab in the back there which is pretty huge really. You'll see when we get inside it actually there's a lot of room in there. And because of that I just decided to add this little sort of outside space built off the side of it here and uh, fenced off using varying junk fences, as I like to do. Fairly simple to do, just a case of placing them in and eyeballing them into, in this case, a fairly straight line. Don't have to do it straight, but I wanted to. Obviously, we've got a mixed bag of stuff here. Some of it's from the Atomic Shop. In fact, most of it's from the Atomic Shop. Some's from Seasons and stuff like that. Mixing it up to create a nice uh, textured junk wall around it here. Got the Blood Eagle Nest here, which I'm not sure if that's available or if it's Atomic Shop or it was a previous season. It's uh, an old item that I don't use often, but I thought I'd like to get a prefab in outside as well, other than just the rifle range. So I tuck that in on the corner and I did a few extra bits to shore it up. So you've got a few bits and pieces there just to add a little bit of extra depth onto the walls. So sort of doubled up over the chain link and stuff with bits and pieces there. We've got this guard post in the corner here. It's quite a good spot for it, really, because it sticks out a little bit and allows us to sort of see down the road in both directions. Gives that turret a nice little bit of coverage, which is good. And this place does get attacked occasionally. You get Scorch sort of wandering over from the Sutton Helvetia directions and occasional robots or super mutant as well that I've had to deal with. See the towering edifice that is the uh, rifle range there in the corner. Definitely a big piece up. There's plenty of room left in the build area after it's in there, but uh, it does take up a fair bit of room. And reasonably flat ground needed for it as well, otherwise uh, it can clip through the floor at times if you're not careful with that. So I've used this tiny little gate here just to uh, create the entrance rather than something larger, because I wanted to squeeze that mole rack generator in, which takes up quite a bit of room itself. So uh, I needed to go small for that gate so it wasn't overlapping too much. Here we go, a little uh, enclosed outer area here. Plenty of decoration around here. Decent amount of functionality outside, but I've also got a good bit of stuff inside, so plenty of reason to use the whole camp, which is one thing I definitely want to, to achieve with this build. And there's a mole rat generator. These were on the Atomic Shop a little while ago, and uh, doubtless will reappear sooner or later. Very, very cool. This is the Fusion Core equivalent one. It's the largest one. I was thinking of using one of the smaller ones, but I needed the power, basically, so I went for the big one. Got a few bits in the corner there just to maintain it with. Yeah, quite happy with how that looks. Those things are quite cool, though, quite large as well. We got the symptomatic tucked in, always useful to have. Bit of a pain to get that to sit as close to the prefab as I wanted it to there, but um, that's often the way. The uh, collision box at the back of that thing does stick out a little bit further than it, than it might do. Decon arch in, definitely pleased to have that in. And with the ground being a bit uneven in this spot, it's reasonably flat, but not completely. I decided to drop that foundation in there to put the power armor station on. Got a few bits and pieces around it just to dress it up and uh, sort of create the the vibe of that crafting area. And I've dropped the scrap box in there as well because uh, having that nice and easy to access definitely makes sense. You sort of drop stuff in there as you run back to the camp, which is good. 
We'll follow Vault Boy around to the Blood Eagle Nest here. And as I say, this is a, an older piece, but one that I don't use very often because it's got quite the radio -y vibe. So if you're going for a radio look for your camp, it's definitely good for that. But uh, this corner of the area, the regular ground, the earth, sort of meets a big rock that's sunk into the ground and it makes it a bit awkward to place things, particularly junk fences and stuff. So uh, in this case, I thought the prefab would be good in this corner. And it gives me a little extra shelter outside as well for our vendor area, which I quite wanted as well. So you see I've really shored things up there. I use the responders, plywood signs there to just kind of close off that gap in the side, put some bars on there just to give a little bit of protection to anybody who's hanging out in here using the vendors. Gone for the same kind of vibe as I did last time with this, put uh, the registers on the table there and then just dress them up. We've actually got in here uh, a few of the shooting targets from the Twitch Prime bundle that's available at the moment. That should be available through to the early part of next year, actually. And um, yeah, these make really nice sort of tabletop decoration. I wouldn't recommend shooting them if you see them in anybody else's camp, because you will end up with a wanted tag. But they are quite nice as table decoration other than shooting targets. So they go in outside the box a little bit there. For those who are curious about whether or not to pick those up, obviously they're available via Twitch Prime, so if you have an Amazon Prime membership and you link it to your Twitch account. If you haven't got one of those, it might be worth looking at anyway, because there's usually a free trial running anyway on Amazon, so you can probably pick this stuff up free if you want it. And there are a few cool bits and pieces in there, some skins and other bits and pieces as well, so worth having a little look at. So I dropped my shelter in there as well, just in case I need it. did want to have a shelter entrance in here. Got the uh, Collectron on a little foundation there as well, because again, the ground's not that even. But put a fence in there just to keep him tucked away in the corner there, because he tends to wander around and open my gates and stuff. And, uh, well, I don't want to lock them and then keep everybody out, so definitely wanted to keep him tucked in a corner. We've got a little gap there so we can just step up to use the uh, terminal there as well. The obligatory shower out front as well. quite like the way I've done this uh, guard post in the corner as well. The, I used the table there rather than using a stash box, which is my normal way to mount the turret. Just gives it a little bit of extra height and allows you to push it a little bit further forward into the sort of front edge of the guard post. So it gets a little bit of better view down the road and uh, it does the job quite nicely. It covers the front and the side quite well from there. So let's head on up into the rifle range and have a little look around the inside. This place gives a really, really cool bunker vibe, and I like it a lot. I did a few bits of decoration on the outside, some railings, so we don't feel like we're going to fall off. The texture, the surface of this particular prefab is a bit awkward in a couple of places. There's some weird seams that occasionally cause issues with wall decoration, but otherwise, I think it's come out quite nicely. Gone absolutely crazy with the decoration in here, and rather than using it as a rifle range, I know that's the, the obvious use, I decided to make it into a kind of bunker vibe sort of home for the player. For those who want to do a Free States bunker type camp, if you've managed to pick this up, then this is probably a good bet for that. Obviously, we're not actually underground, but coming down the steps as we come in really gives us that vibe. That and the fact that it's got no windows as well. Yeah, really big space in here, although it managed to fill it up quite well. I've got crafting space at the front and then living space at the back. And yeah, I like how this has come out. Managed to divide it off into different areas quite nicely. Got some nice walkways and it gets a nice underground bunker vibe, which is what I wanted to go for. Looks quite cool. The floor in here is a tiny bit awkward. Furniture does tend to pop down into it a little bit sometimes, so you might have to faff around to place stuff. But uh, on the whole, it's not too bad. No blueprinting really needed, just uh, a little patience really. Place and then reposition was the main order of the day. Yeah, managed to squeeze everything apart from the power armor station in here. Could have got the power armor station in if I really wanted, I suppose, but I like the way this has come out. Nice little square enclosed crafting area. A few bits and pieces of decoration around. That workbench, I think it's a Responders skin on that. It's the only other skin other than the basic one that I've actually got for it. And I didn't know I had it. I've no idea where I picked it up. I think it might have been a recent acquisition, but uh, quite happy to have a different look to that for once. <laughs> for probably the first time, I think. So really happy to have that. Loads of bits of decoration hanging around on the walls. Break up the otherwise bare concrete. Skilly man hanging out there, descending from the um, ventilation system. Use the merge glitch to push that tinker's bench into the cabinet there, the stash box as well, just to mix things up and make a bit of variety. So I wanted to change things a little bit, make it a bit more bunkerish. The sort of metal cabinet fits with that vibe to my eye. 
So we've got a little games area over here on the side. I did want to use the Fallout First pool table that we got back a few weeks ago, last month, in this spot. But unfortunately, that thing needs a really large amount of space. And by the time I got here, I just didn't have that much space. So uh, I went with the foosball table. we will use the Wildwood Den lights as well, just over the top here. It puts out a nice bit of light, but not too much. It's got a nice tone to it. It's not too bright. It works quite nicely. I do like those. Good little addition, those. Fairly standard little sitting area here. Nice bits and pieces on the wall. That bust at the back, by the way, is from the pit, along with a number of bits of decoration in here. And yeah, nice different vibe. This place is actually big enough to have something that large on the wall in, which is quite cool. A couple of guns on the wall as well. A little kitchen area tucked in the corner. Figuring out how to capture the bunker vibe for this was a bit of a challenge with the tools available, but sort of using the fridge to kind of mark the end of the kitchen area and then tucking the rest of it behind it worked quite nicely. A fire alarm bell there in case something goes wrong. So again, keeping with the bunker vibe, I use this uh, stash box just to create a counter here and divide off the area. And I've used those shooting targets, again, the tins and the uh, demijohn on there, just to create a bit of sort of kitchen decoration, because we haven't got a massive amount of it, but empty cans and bottles and stuff like that are a really good addition in terms of giving that right kind of vibe, in terms of extra decoration for it. So I'm really happy to sort of repurpose them in that way. So definitely good and worth picking up for that particular perspective. Hopefully they'll add some more bits and pieces like that in the future, because it's nice to see standalone individual stuff like that being added. Definitely adds a bit more flavour. Little sleeping area tucked in the corner there. Fairly simple. I wanted that to be enclosed and separated from everything else, hence the screen. But I also wanted it to be kind of visible from the entrance, so you can sort of see everything that's in here. And that was kind of a, a difficult balance to strike, really, with the bedroom section there. But it came together quite nicely, and the fact they used the clean screen rather than the more rustic one means you can see through it so it kind of uh, it, it kind of strikes the right balance there which i'm happy about do like the way this crafting area has come out lots and lots of decoration and detail on it should say actually there's a probably about 40 percent or so of the build budget still left after i finished this camp so i could have kept going on well that might have been a bit over the top obviously frame rates get a bit funny when you put lots and lots of individual small items so Bit of caution is required. Big blank space up there, so I decided to put some posters on it. Looks all right. Fairly neat. It's one of the neater bits of this, but uh, I like the way that looks. Yeah, you really get the vibe from up here as to just how big the internal space in here is, which makes sense for a, um, a shooting range. For a bunker, it makes it a bit more of a, a task to fill it, but I'm happy that it's come out. Really happy to have those Pittsburgh flags as well. I'm looking forward to getting more of the camp objects from the pit. Sort of a bit at a time, as and when we earn enough stamps to do that. Or get lucky with a weekly plan drop as well. In fact, those banners were a, a lucky plan drop, so it's always nice. Yeah, loads of stuff on the walls up here. Definitely worth saving a lot of space for decoration if you can use this for something other than a rifle range. If you're doing it at a rifle range, you don't really need quite so much, but... Uh, yeah, I wanted to go crazy and make a nice kind of underground bunker vibe, even though clearly it's not underground. But uh, yeah, I think it captures that quite well. So the internal space is rectangular and the external is um, dome-shaped over there. So definitely a bit of dead space somewhere behind the walls, I think, there. But uh, it makes sense. It makes it a much easier shape to work with and to build with. Because when you've got curved walls and stuff, it causes all manner of havoc when you're trying to place stuff in there. They've run into this issue before with some prefabs with Esda, which I should use those prefabs again actually at some point, but uh, would have gone well with this as there's a concrete bunker that would have kind of matched this quite nicely. Hmm, might have to think about that. Yeah, do you quite like how this come out? Lots and lots of things going on, lots of decoration, lots of detail, lots of little interactable practical parts to the camp as well, which I'm quite happy about, and uh, loads of functional areas, and it, it looks pretty cool I think. But on top of it all, quite a simple build really. The only building that was done really is the walls and dropping those couple of prefabs in. So, um, sort of structural building anyway. Yeah, happy with this spot. I think I will be holding on to it for quite a while. So there we go. I hope you folks did enjoy this little look around the uh, Wild Mountain Rifle Range and the camp I've built with it. If you did like the video, please do consider dropping subs and likes. I very, very much appreciate it. As always, down below, you'll find social media links, merch store, and channel memberships. If you're interested in supporting the channel in that way, it really, really helps out. So, a massive thank you to everyone who's done that already. And if you get a chance, of course, do join us for live streams as well. We are playing Fallout 76 as per. And we've got some cool bits and pieces on the go over the next few weeks. So, definitely some cool stuff to look out for there as well. But for now, 
Thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.